Well, let me tell you a little story and then you can see if it applies to you. You ever had everything running great and, you know, you've got a good load developed, everything's shooting great, and then you start getting weird flyers. So you check out your barrels, you check out your scopes, uh, you check out your ammo, you try loading some different powders, you start checking your rear rest. You go through just about everything that a normal person would go through until you get to the point that you've asked enough people, you finally go to a person that you normally wouldn't ask for advice and they give you the simplest solution that you never thought of. Well, that's where I found myself and I'm human and I don't know everything. So let me tell you what I found. I found it's the firing pin spring. So I'm gonna show you real quick. Here's a normal bolt disassembly tool. So I just did that while we were talking. And here's what was happening. Everything was shooting great. I was getting amazing water lines, getting ready for Southwest Nationals. And then I noticed some weird flyers and, you know, I chalked it up to, you know, maybe the ammo got out of tune somehow, or maybe it was conditions. And anyway, I got back and, you know, I did fine there. Like, you know, I had trouble, a little trouble at long range you know, finished third at mid-range. You know, I really couldn't complain too much, but I got back home and kept shooting uh, the same gun that I'd been shooting there, and my flyers just kept getting worse to the point where, I mean, I was literally throwing eights at 600 yards. Now, I mean, that just doesn't happen. Uh, so I went through and swapped out some barrels, swapped out some scopes, swapped out some scope rings, checked my rear bag, did all the things we just talked about, could not resolve the flyer issue. Tried, uh, I tried the 190s I was shooting, I tried 184s, I tried 180s, uh, different neck tension, like, I mean, I literally burned an entire 500 count box of bullets trying to figure out what the heck was going on. So I call up a buddy of mine, and I said, look, here's all the things I've done. What else could it be? What would you tell somebody? He goes, well, how old's your gun? So I tell him, he goes, when's the last time you changed your firing pin? Uh, spring. I tell him, he goes, yep, that's it. I said, you're telling me this little $7 part is what has cost me $300 in bullets and powder and everything else? And he goes, yep, that's pretty much it. So uh, I actually, it was my other bolt, but um, I wanted to go ahead and sh change out the other one and thought I would show you this. So anyway, my other bolt, I changed out the spring. Instantly, my groups came right back uh, like nothing ever happened. So, you know, look, I, you know, you shoot long enough, you hope you hear everything and, and figure everything out. It's never going to happen. So, um, you know, my biggest advice would be don't be afraid to reach out to people. Uh, but let me show you how this is done. So we took apart the the bolt like you normally would for cleaning. And then we went, well, I should say I went and bought one of these, which is a firing pin removal sp uh, tool. Now, this one is from Midway. Brownells? No, Midway. And um, it's kind of nice because it has both Remington and Ruger. Now, notice the bolt coarse thread, fine thread. It came, I don't know why, because I'd swear more people have a Remington than a Ruger, but um, it came screwed in on the Remington side, uh, which means where, wherever the empty hole is, is where your bolt's going to thread into. Uh, so you, you could easily cross thread something if you're not paying attention. So make sure that the side, like this says Remington, that's the side we're going to screw my bolt into. Uh, and that's why there's a large and a coarse, a uh, fine and a coarse thread. Anyway, so we're going to start this in a little bit. Now, in here, well, I'll take it out so you can see this. So on the back side of both of these, it's hollowed out. Ugh, fine thread. All right, see how that's um, hollow and hollow? So that's going to go over the firing pin and allow us to compress everything. So uh, Remington Ruger. Okay, so fine thread on Ruger. Let's get this started a little bit. And then what we want to do is we want to take our bolt and that's going to thread into this side. Now you can see where that's going to start going in. And, um, you know, you don't need to go all the way in, but now you're going to start threading this thing. And it has a bolt on there, so I may grab a wrench here in a second. The last one I did, you know, you can turn it by hand fairly easily. So, um, you know, you just do this. And what you're doing is you're pushing the entire caulking assembly back. And what we're looking for is over here, and there's going to be a pin that exposes itself soon. And depending on the manufacturer, whether it's Remington or Defiance or Bat or whatever, 
um, those pins are going to come out easier or harder. So let me, let me just see here. Now, Defiance tends to be pretty easy. Um, I probably don't need much more than a, a quick little tap here. Kick that out. So you can see, see how that's coming out? And it, it's just a simple pin. It's not a big deal. Okay. So... There's the retainer pin. Now all we have to do is completely unscrew this thing again. Now for what it's worth, um, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can unscrew the bolt, but then you gotta screw the bolt back in and it's a little bit harder under pressure with the new spring on. So um, I did find it was easier to do it this way, even though it takes a little bit longer. So we're gonna go ahead and unscrew the whole thing right now. So there we go. That's going to come off. And we are simply going to remove this spring and replace it with this one. And you can see there's been a little bit of compression. Now this is an extra power, so it's going to be just a little bit stronger. But a um, buddy of mine did this not long ago, and he actually found that his spring was about half an inch off. So it was kind of interesting. All right, so now we're just doing the same thing. We're just driving that spring and, and assembly back so we can put that pin in to retain it. Sorry for the boredom here. All right, so we're starting to get an exposed talking area here. Let's see. All right, now it does get a little tricky because you need to line it up with the hole. And that's not always easy to do. So you can see it's off by a little bit, so it's easier just to take a pin and move it so that you know when this slides on that it's going to line up. Okay, so that's all nicely lined up. And these can be a little bit of a challenge, depending on, uh, like you can see, this does happen, but you can see here that that, uh, that hole moved on us, because it is under tension, obviously. And I can kind of twist it a little bit here. So if I turn this a little bit, I can see how these are lining up now. And that's it. So that's back in. We're gonna release this tension. Don't, don't try to unscrew that, it's a nightmare because it's under a lot of tension. It's easier to undo this side. And now, now this is loose, so now this is easy to take off. And that's it. So now you've got a uh, new firing pin spring. So if you're having problems with unidentified flyers or Anything else that might be weird, uh, that could be your solid problem. Uh, it's also how you would change out the firing pin, which um, actually I might do a video soon on changing out the firing pin too. So anyway, there you go.